To youth in action where young people are taking initiative to create impactful change in society in today's program we have belinda adik the founder of miliki kasri group limited belinda karibu sana Asante. so what can you tell us about belinda adik who are you belinda adik is the founder and the ceo of miliki kasri group limited belinda adik is a mother of four and a wife Belinda Adik is a lawyer by profession. Uh, Belinda Adik is an entrepreneur. That is what I am. Wow. Yes. So a lawyer, a mother, an entrepreneur, all these things. Yes. What, what kind of law do you do? Uh, I am not practicing law. Oh, you're not practicing? Yes. Okay. I will say for me law was not really a passion. It was a course I found myself doing. So I, entrepreneurship is something I love doing. I would wake up in the middle of the night for it. So, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did Miliki Kastri Group Limited begin? Having worked in a law firm that was dealing in conveyance, I found myself dealing so much with properties, uh, buying and selling of properties. And that is how my interest for properties was born. So I started Miliki Kastri as a properties uh, kind of business, but that did not pick up well, especially because uh, the properties was born right in the beginning of COVID. And uh, we all know that during COVID, nobody wanted to deal with properties in terms of uh, you have to do the rent collection. And that was the greatest challenge for Paul that this rent was not there and everybody was moving out and all that. Yeah. So properties did not pick well. We had to find a business that complemented properties. Cleaning became our next go to business because it was a business that was booming during COVID. When you talk about um, sanitizing and all that, it was all about being clean, yeah? That is how cleaning picked up. And uh, it did well, especially on the first year. And um, during our cleaning business is because uh, we used to offer both commercial and residential, mostly residential, you will find that guys had the need to move and they would always tell us to source for them movers, uh, uh, companies to come and move them. And, um, well, most of them will come back with complaints. Yeah, you gave us these movers, they didn't do well and all that. And you thought, well, there's a gap in this particular industry. And, uh, yeah, we jumped well into it. And that is how our movers and relocation was born. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you do moving and relocating. Yes. And uh, you talked about cleaning. What kind of cleaning are you? Are, you, are we speaking? Yeah. When we talk about cleaning, we talk about the residential kind of cleaning, mm -hmm. whereby uh, we have people who want their seats and their mattresses cleaned. We have people who want their houses cleaned. We have offices that want to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. So that is what we talk about the residential and uh, the commercial. The commercial is where we do the offices, the schools, the fumigation and all that, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that is basically what we do in terms of cleaning. Okay. Yeah. You, you to you've, to you've told us about uh, starting your company around the corona time, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you identified this gap. Yes. What made it possible for you to just dive right in into the industry? Well, I'm a risk taker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I take risks in terms of everything. Once I have an idea formulated, um, once I have a, a gap identified, you know, like for example, when we were doing the conveyancing, you will have clients coming into the law firm and they're like, I am so tired of um, managing this property. You know, can I get someone to manage it for me? Mm -hmm. And um, that is how we got into now the properties kind of business, you know. Mm -hmm. So all my business, I will say they have been a need you know, you identify a gap and a need from within the clients and you really get into it. Yeah. Well, you started your company as a real estate business. Yes. 
I'm curious to know, mm -hmm. how did you go about the licensing, maybe the name changing, because mm -hmm. you started real estate, mm -hmm. now you're moving and re relocating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how did you go about that as a lawyer yourself? Mm -hmm. The name remained the same. Mm -hmm. I love the name. Uh, basically, the name means owning your castle. Yeah, I believe in royalty and all that. Yeah, so we felt really it's even as we delve into other forms of services, we're still dealing with your castle. You know, we want you to have a clean castle. We want you to have a royalty form of movement. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, the name remained the same. When we registered our company, it is registered as a service company. Mm -hmm. So still in everything that we do, we just yes. ensure that it is a service-based company. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You changed trajectory. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What lies for real estate? Do you still do real estate or you just decided let the real estate agents do what they do and let me do what I do? I don't do real estate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't do real estate. I mm -hmm. just found that it was a little bit um, hectic for me, I would say, a little bit crazy, mm -hmm. you know, having to deal with... No, I don't do real estate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Basically, when we, we got into real estate and it, it never really picked, mm -hmm. so when we left it, we left it for good. I thought you were a risk taker. <laughs> we took the risk. It did work. So <laughs> you jump on to the next thing. Mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. So Miliki Kasri Group Limited, mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. activities do you engage in there? In Miliki, we have the cleaning service. We have the moving and relocation. We have uh, storage. So we have a warehouse somewhere on uh, Likoni Road, in Dastoliria, Nairobi. So what I shall tell people is what we do is we sell convenience, you know. Um, for people who want the convenient kind of living, you want someone to come and clean your house, we'll do it for you. You want to move. Because uh, like when you're moving, you don't do anything. Your work is to just be there and we come and we do everything for you. We pack your house, we transport, we go to the other side, we unpack. So it is convenient. You can wake up, go to work, you know, mm -hmm. and come back into the new house. Yeah, so those are the kind of the activities that we engage in. Wow. Yes. And so is there a way you package your services, maybe in terms of pricing or something like that? Um, our service, our kind of pricing is actually based on the need of the client. So we won't say that we really have a rate card for our moving services. It is on need to need basis because sometimes, especially in terms of movers, when you when you doing the sub the, 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 the quotation, we, we have to go for the survey, yeah? So uh, you will not move a one bedroom, maybe you have a one bedroom that is on fifth floor, and somebody has a one bedroom that is on third floor or first floor. The price can't be the same, you know? Mm -hmm. Then you have the distance, yeah? So apart from the house size, we have the distance, we have um, the extra services you require. Do you want TV mounting? Do you want your DCS TV mounted? Do you want your electronics fixed, you know? Mm -hmm. So it is on need-to-need -need basis that we offer our quotation. And so how do you get your clientele? Um, 70% of our clientele has been through social media. Social media has been really impactful for our business. We also depend on referrals. Um, getting the first client was the hardest. It took us a whole year to get wow. our first client in terms of movers. And the first client was a friend. <laughs> You know, so um, it, it was a bit of a, a hard nut to crack, but uh, once we cracked it, we were in there, you know. Mm -hmm. So from that first client, you get to referrals, you know, they refer you based on the kind of service that you offer. So the referrals are very important. The networking events, we've had a lot of networking events, you go and meet people, you know, and you send your service out there. Mm -hmm. So that has also been impactful for our business. Interesting. Yes. So this one year where you, you didn't have a client, mm -hmm. what was going through the business? Like, did you want to give up or what was going through your mind as a CEO and founder? We almost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Though we still had the cleaning company running, you know, but um, 
the movers, we, at some point, we actually thought, yeah, this was really a crazy idea. <laughs> you know, because uh, when you're not into it, everybody is asking you, do you know movers? Do you know people who can help me move? Then you get into it, and now all those no questions, they stop. Yeah, move. and you're <laughs> like, okay, what happened? I thought you guys wanted movers, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. So um, it got to that point where we thought, okay, yeah, maybe this time we, we outdid ourselves in terms of risk taking. We mm -hmm. almost gave up. But immediately after the first year, it's like, um, it was paid back, you know, everything just came. It took off, yeah. Yeah, it just picked up from there and we've never looked back. Yeah. Yes. So your business is entirely customer service. Yes. How do you ensure that your customers are happy? Well, it's really about, number one, the attitude of your workers, because you'll find that most of the time you're not even on the ground. What kind of workers are you sending to the people? What is their attitude? You know, there are those guys who are like, move this chair, and they're like, I'm not doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, number one, we have training for our workers. Your attitude has to be top notch. Number two, you have to have integrity because we get into those big, big houses. And I think I would, I would um, thank my parents so much because um, uh, growing up, my mother never allowed us to touch anybody's, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in. Um, Dandora Estate. And uh, I went to those schools that are considered big schools. Yeah, I went to Pangani Girls. And of course, when you went to Pangani, you will find that the who's and who are there, you know. And coming from that such a humble background, you will be really interested in maybe getting what they have. And what my mother always said is, don't forget where you come from. Tosheka na vituzako. And I think that has been a really impactful thing for me, you know, because I will not go to somebody's house and wish this was mine, you know? And that is what we ensure even our people, the integrity, you know, you will not go to somebody's house and want to pick something, you know? We've gone to houses where you even meet money on the table and, you know, <laughs> you're, tama. you're not tempted, yeah, you're not tempted to, mm -hmm. to take it, eh? Mm -hmm. pesa ukipata, wanapata pesa yake. You know, whatever, you don't pick anything from anybody's house. Mm -hmm. So that has really been... The honesty bit has been uh, something for us. Mm. Speaking of honesty, mm. how do you, you know, what criteria do you use to get he uh, help from movers mm -hmm. or the people you work with? Mm -hmm. How do you choose them? Um, that is also through referral laws. I rarely <laughs> just pick someone from the street. It has to be, you have to be, have been brought by someone else who knows you very, very well, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. because as we say, it's a risky business. You don't want to move someone today and tomorrow you know, the people you moved, you, of course, they know what is in there, you know, and mm -hmm. so they can easily send someone. So for picking of our employees has mostly been also through referrals. You have to be referred by someone to us. We have to go through your system. You have to have your, your good conduct certificate. You have to have your IDs. You have to have your everything. So, yeah, that's... Wow. This seems like a lot. So mm -hmm. how much work is required into moving and relocating as well as storage and housing? Well... It is something. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us that something, yeah? Yeah, moving is is, is not easy. And um, I think if you even as a child or growing up, you have moved, you yes, know, yes, without us even having the movers company, because moving is it's a new concept in this country, though not very, very new, but it's quite a new concept. And um, all of us growing up, when we moved, we didn't see movers. <laughs> You know, it was you starting to pack your things and mm -hmm. you would pack for a whole week and move and go and unpack for another month and you would have clothes all over. And it was quite some hectic. So moving is still hectic, mm -hmm. only that now we choose to do it professionally. That makes it easier for the client. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, you would move somebody from seventh floor to the next house, to sixth floor, and there's no elevator. It is something. It is, it is a heavy kind of work. Yeah, so it is not easy, but it is doable, especially when you love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, you spoke about identifying a gap. Mm -hmm. So, how competitive is this market? It is competitive, it is, it is um, in a labor, it has uh, competition, a lot of competition. Um, you have to sell yourself apart as a mover for you to be able to, to get the clientele. But the business is there. People move every day, every year. Well, I have had clients that have moved thrice in a year. You know, people get transferred mm -hmm. to, to, to different towns and they have to move. People get uh, 
new jobs you get you upgrade you downgrade so people move every single day mm -hmm. so it's it's a it's a competitive kind of industry yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, what kind of challenges uh, do you meet mm -hmm. doing this job well number one for me as a person I found this being a male dominated industry to be uh, quite hard to crack at first because everyone you're dealing with you meet very few women in terms of um, the tracks in terms of the employees in terms of uh, the partners you know so um, even there's male employees taking orders from a female and I was small, and nowadays I'm a kubwa, you know, so I was quite small. And you're there dealing with uh, Maweida, eh? So, yeah, it will get scary. Some of them would not listen, you know, they're like, Mimi sita ambuwa na mwanamke, you know. And um, even the tracks, it was really frustrating at first, you know, uh, until we got to a work balance that um, I am not here as a woman, I am here as your boss, I am paying you. So we got to a respectful balance whereby, yeah, they can take instructions. And even the way even you, you give your instructions, you know, it has to be respectful because some of um, these our men are uh, patriarchs. Can I say patriarchal? Is that English? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. In, in nature, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, they just don't know how to. Yeah. So we had to find our, our, our work balance, even in terms of track. I also had to withdraw myself from some of the day to day running, you know, like, for example, having to directly deal with the truck drivers that was a headache you know mm -hmm. so you just have to find a balance in between but it was it was challenging especially at first mm -hmm. yes and uh, so speaking as a woman who's mm -hmm. navigated the male dominated space mm -hmm. what tips can you give another young lady mm -hmm. who's also in the same shoes mm -hmm. i will say number one be firm you know let them not see a woman let them respect you because um, you see, as 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 uh, women, sometimes you like pulling out the the woman card. Eh? Keep that card. <laughs> okay. You know, be a person when you, when you go out there. Be firm in how you're dealing with them. Don't oh, so because I mean, no, don't use that one. Don't look for pity. You know, just be strong. You know what you do, yeah. And uh, all those males, at the end of the day, you're paying them, so they are your employees. So be firm. That is all I would say. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. And being a young person who founded your own business and it took off, mm -hmm. what are your greatest achievements in this journey? Well, surviving this far <laughs> is an achievement. <laughs> um, they say businesses don't last over three years. Mm. You know? So doing the first year successfully, even as we were not having any work in our first year, surviving that one, then now getting to that point, the learning process, because, uh, you know, movers is also a lot of skill work. And sometimes you will find that, of course, there are skills you don't have. So navigating through those, you know, I don't know this one, I'm learning this one, and we are still learning. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, I think those are achievements, just surviving this far. It's, <laughs> it's something, you know. Wow. Yeah. Speaking of surviving this far, how mm -hmm. can you describe the ease towards making something of your own mm -hmm. and just flourishing or having fulfillment from it? Number one, um, patience. You know? The problem with most of us is that we want to start a business today and tomorrow we want to see it up there. It doesn't happen. Yeah? So uh, patience keeps you. Mm -hmm. you know? Then uh, consistency. You have to be consistent, even if it's in terms of marketing. Yeah, you'll talk to a hundred people, maybe only two will listen to you, but you have to be consistent. You know, you keep pushing those doors, keep pushing, keep pushing. Then at the end of the day, yes, you get that one. Wow. Mm. You spoke about networking and going to events. How mm. did that impact your work? Your network is your network. <laughs> <laughs> um, We'll talk about um, attending expos, 
we'll talk about attending dinners we'll talk about general networking you know um meeting someone and just creating a rapport because for me i don't believe networking is all about going to an event and dishing out cards it's about talking to someone and creating an impact for me when i go to an event i'm not looking at uh, 10 people i'm looking at can i add two people to my circle you know and uh, you know those two people when you really talk they you get interested in what they do they get to say what you do mm -hmm. then that is a client because you don't have to serve them directly but they know what you do and uh, yeah the word goes out there so you see you have a lot mm -hmm. you know to give mm -hmm. you're doing a great job in mm -hmm. terms of entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. and if i am interested in the work you do mm -hmm. how can we get you we are on social media we are on facebook as meliki castri cleaners and movers we are on instagram as meliki castri cleaners and movers we are on tiktok as uh, Miliki Castri Cleaners and Movers. Um, our mobile number is 0727-976661. So that is where you'll get us. I like having um, a one-on-one -on -one with my clients. As much as I delegate some duties, I don't delegate my interaction with the clients. I like having a personal touch to the service I give. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so how does the future look like for Miliki Castri movers and relocators? The future is amazing. The future is bright. I don't believe in just localizing my trade. Um, so far we've had um, two um, out of the country kind of move and we're really looking at setting up our services over and beyond our borders. So. Yeah, the future is bright. That's quite ambitious. Yeah. And knowing that you're a risk taker, <laughs> it is very much possible. It yeah? is possible. Wow. Yes. And so what can you advise a, another young person out there who has an idea, mm -hmm. but maybe they're struggling with uh, seeking for a job, mm -hmm. employment, such mm -hmm. things. What can you advise such a young person? Um, number one, monetize your ideas. Number two, you don't need a lot of capital. You know, most people will tell you, I want to do this one, but I don't have capital. You know, you don't need a lot of capital. Just put your idea out there. We have people who have set business with zero shillings. You know, yeah, so um, just believe in uh, your idea, monetize it, and uh, it will work. Number two, risk taker, jump. Yeah, once you jump, you will get wings, or uh, someone will hold you, or something. But jump. Oh. Yes. You've spoken about mm -hmm. someone holding your hand. Was there someone who held your hand or it's been you and you alone? It is important to have mentors. I always say um, have somebody who's better than you and also have somebody who you're mentoring behind you, you know, so that you, you're learning. You know, you can't say that you know everything or you learn everything by yourself. You have to have someone who's mentoring you towards mm -hmm. the industry. I've had mentors, I still have mentors uh, who have been there for years. We've been at it for three years. We have probably been there for 10 years. So of course, um, mentorship, collaborations, business collaborations are important. Let us just not look at uh, business as competition. You know, you can also collaborate with the industry players who are in the same industry and um, make something for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That has been a nice and productive, you know, interaction. Mm -hmm. I am a young woman mm -hmm. who wants to, I aspires to be like you, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. How can I get to that point where I'm proud of what I'm doing and mm -hmm. I am, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a founder, I'm a mm -hmm. CEO. Most of us, when we reach that level, mm -hmm. we tend to go back down. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of family, you said you're a mother mm -hmm. of four, mm -hmm. a, a wife. Mm -hmm. How can I do all those mm -hmm. and still do my work? You find a balance. Okay. You find a balance because um, it is not easy. I've, 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 I've had two of my children on running Miliki and um, we had to, you know, also delegate, have people you trust around you, you know, so that you know that even if I am not here today, Miliki will still run, you know. Um, yeah, find a work balance. Oh. Get help also 
you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you say that, yeah, I'm a hundred percent mother, I'm a hundred percent entrepreneur, I'm a, I have to do everything myself. No, you will crash. Yeah. So find help. Wow. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Belinda. Mm -hmm. I have loved what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. I am sure you've loved it too. Find a work balance, find help. Do not wave the I'm a woman card for the young ladies. Mm -hmm. We are all in the same space. Man or woman, go for what you're doing. Go for your idea, monetize it, find mentors, and trust me, success will be knocking at your doors. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangwesa Grenis. See you next time. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. This is the way.